Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Brittany, and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Zoo. Welcome to my home. Today's webinar is indeed from my home, so you'll notice that my mask is actually down around my neck. Since I don't share any space with anybody, it's safe for me to have my mask down. So that's where we'll be just for our webinar today. All right, today is one of my favorite groups of animals to talk about. If you've joined me for the snake webinar, you know that that's already one of my top ones, but primates, oh, love them so much. You'll, you may have even noticed that my mask has some lemurs on it too. All right, so now that that's out of the way, Miss Brittany is a primate enthusiast, this is true. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Firstly, we'll talk about the location of primates, more specifically our non-human primates. Now, depending on the researchers that you speak to, there's, there are anywhere between 190 and 350 primate species. Why does it get so confusing? Well, as we have um, been learning more and research has progressed with technology, especially with the process of looking at DNA, we've been able to find out if some animals are more related than previously thought. It's really fascinating stuff. With our primates, we are going to be going over the three main types, so the three groupings. As we know and have learned in previous webinars, there are a lot of animals in this world, and scientists group them based on characteristics and commonalities. So for primates, they fall under three groupings of lemurs, monkeys, and apes. Now, I know that since you're here joining me, I bet I have a few other primate enthusiasts and I'm curious to know, what's your favorite primate? Even if primates aren't your favorite animal, is there one that you really enjoy learning about or maybe watching at the zoo? The three that I have pulled up here on the screen are three from the St. Louis Zoo. Orangutans, Angie, that's actually my favorite too. Don't tell the other primates that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for sharing. Oh, we have Joe the gorilla, even more specifically. Excellent. And chimps. Looks like we have a lot of ape fans with us today. Excellent. Thank you guys so much for sharing. Now, if you are a primate, and this is what, think about a scientist with a checklist. Is this animal a primate? We're going to go over what makes a primate a primate. To be a primate, you have to be a mammal. That means you are warm-blooded, you're born alive, drink milk to grow, and you are covered in hair or fur. Check. Forward-facing eyes, which can be very helpful when you're swinging in the trees. You can tell what's known as depth perception, so you don't miss a branch. Large brains, so we are talking about some intelligent animals today. Long lifespan and a long childhood. Long childhood means that they are dependent upon their caretakers for longer compared to other animals. Social, of course. And these social groups can range in size from very small to very, very large. This is a group of our uh, colobus monkeys that you can see at the St. Louis Zoo. This is our family group. And something interesting with hands, they have fingernails instead of claws. So all primates have fingernails. And that makes sense because if you are climbing trees or grabbing onto trees and moving through trees, claws would get stuck in the bark more. So fingernails release better, but still help with grip. Fingerprints, and they're all unique. And of course, grasping hands. Now, I thought it would be fun to have an activity to test this out a little bit. What good is a thumb? What good's a thumb? So looking at this is a comparison graphic. So you can see different types of primates and also the bone structure. Now notice the spider monkey actually doesn't have an opposable thumb that's hanging out. Now opposable thumbs help with grabbing and they can move in different directions. So we're going to do an activity now where we lose our thumbs. Sounds crazy? Stay with me guys. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. All right. For this activity, you're going to need to get an item. Now, there are a variety of items you can get. You can find a shoe, 
with a shoelace. You can find a jar with a lid that screws or string or ribbon. So I'm gonna give you guys five seconds to find an item such as one of the three examples. You guys ready? I'm gonna do a countdown, you ready? Five, four, three, two, one. Come on back. All right, guys, hopefully you found an item. If not, feel free to try this after the webinar. What we're gonna do, see your hands? No more thumbs. You can either tuck your thumb to the side, tuck it inside. We're just gonna focus on our four fingers here. You can either try to untie your shoelace and retie it, open the jar, or what I'm gonna try and do is tie a bow with my ribbon. So we're gonna go ahead and practice that um, right now and see how easy or difficult, maybe even impossible right now, this might be. So you guys can't really see my work, but you can probably judge by my face with how it's going. <laughs> and it's very surprising how much we use our thumb in everyday activities. Okay, Ooh, that one was really hard. All right, I got my bow together. I actually put it on a vase of flowers and it's a pretty good bow. I'll take it for no thumbs. This is great. This is not normally how it looks though. So it's pretty fun to try it out. Now I'm gonna keep going with the webinar, but do keep practicing as, um, as you listen and follow along. So with our primates, you might notice that there might be some fun items when you do visit them at the St. Louis Zoo. Those are called enrichment items. Now, since we have intelligent animals um, and also they have really good dexterity with their hands, a lot of enrichment items help to help them use their problem solving skills so they use their brain, but also using a lot of their physical adaptations too. So you might notice some really fun, unique items in there. It's all part of their care that the keepers do um, and really amazing um, to see their adaptations. Okay, we're gonna keep moving on. I keep seeing a lot of people scrolling through uh, with the chat. This is awesome. Someone trying to drink coffee without thumbs. You are a brave soul. <laughs> Starting with our lemur group now. So again, we're going through our three primate groups. Lemurs are only found on the island of Madagascar. That island is off the coast of Africa. They're only found there, which means they are endemic, an endemic species only found in Madagascar. For lemurs, eyes are more on the side of their, mind, or their head. They communicate a lot through scent and have prominent scent glands. They have a wet nose and that wet nose makes sense because wet noses pick up more scent. They can smell better. So think about like a dog can smell really well or even a bear. It's all about that nose. And with their shape of their face, it's almost a little more dog-like as well. They do have a special lens on their eyes or in their eyes called a tapetum lucidum and that extra lens will help them see at night. So it's really helpful for all nocturnal animals really to have that, including owls. And another behavior with our primates since they are social is they groom. Now all three groupings groom. And you may have noticed that with a primate picking through the hair of another one. And you might say, I wonder why they're doing that. It's a really great question. They do that as a form of bonding. They can also help to kind of clean through areas or check on maybe they have like a little like scab or something they might check on the spot, but it's mostly for that social interaction, that social bonding. Think about how you have friends and then you have best friends. And if you could choose to spend more time with one of them, you might choose your best friend more often. You'll see that with our primates where they will groom others more than, um, than certain ones. So they even have friends as well. Now, lemurs have a special tool called a tooth comb. And that's like down on the lower part of their jaw. So I have a picture on the top corner and it does, it looks just like a comb. So that helps with grooming too. Moving on to our monkeys. Now monkeys are on different continents and there are a lot of differences between um, them. So geographically, 
and physically. So they're actually split into two sections. So we have our old world or African Asian monkeys that we'll go over first. African Asian because of the continents where they're found. Notice that I crossed out Madagascar. No primates other than lemurs, no non-human primates other than lemurs are found on Madagascar. So just keep that in mind. So welcome to our African Asian monkeys. These are amazing animals as all of our primates are. They have narrow noses. So observe that nose kind of going down. The nostrils actually point down too. They're more diurnal. Diurnal means that they're active in the daytime and sleep at night. Sounds familiar, huh? They're larger than our new world monkeys and we'll see some examples in just a moment. And they all have tails. I repeat, monkeys have tails. And some have terrestrial lifestyles. We think about monkeys as being up high in the trees all the time. And surely a lot of them do. But some monkeys actually live on the ground in more terrestrial or land. All right, moving on. Because we only have so much time together. New World or Central South American monkeys. Again, named for where they're found. These are smaller in size generally. So you'll see our marmosets and our tamarins here. Those really small primates. If you look at their noses, you may make some observations. Now, the observations with the nose are maybe a little bit more flat. And these monkeys are more arboreal. Arboreal means that they're up in the trees. So remember our old world, some are terrestrial, some are on the land. These guys, mostly all up in the trees. And some even have prehensile tails. Prehensile tail is something that'd be so cool to have because it's an extra appendage that can grab and grasp things. So notice that spider monkey up in the tree. The spider monkey is using its tail to hold on so it can help with balance but also to pick up treats and food. On to our last group, our apes. Now we have what's called great apes and lesser apes. And I'll let you know the difference. <laughs> our apes, our great apes are the most intelligent of all primates. They're also the largest in size. Um, they are so fascinating, such a fascinating group. And one of the most important things to remember, if you only remember one thing about apes, no tails. I repeat, apes have no tails. That's a really easy way to distinguish between a lemur, monkey, and ape. Now, the great apes, they have chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, and bonobos. So those are the groupings. And then with our lesser apes, um, oh, and real fast. This is also the group that has the longest lifespan. Um, Mira, our female Sumatran orangutan, just turned 51 in May, 51. Happy belated birthday, Mira. And they also stay with their grown-ups or stay with their family groups a lot longer too. So they have a pretty long childhood. Now, lesser apes are smaller. Again, no tails. It's really important to remember. They're very fast and agile in trees as well. And now the picture that I have below is a gibbon. It's in the middle, so it's two gibbons. And siamangs belong in this group too. All right, guys. <sighs> We made it. I hope you guys have been taking some notes because you're gonna need it. Just kidding, this is not a pop quiz. It's a surprise primate that we are going to meet, but first I wanna see if we can figure out what it is first. This primate is an excellent climber. Hmm. And if you have guesses, you can definitely put it in the webinar chat. A long lifespan, okay. Second longest childhood, huh? long childhood, no tail, <laughs> and fabulous orange hair. Does anybody have a guess? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Which primate could this be? Correct, it's orangutans. Yeah, awesome guys. So this is a picture of Chinta, our male orangutan, male Sumatran orangutan, and in the back is Ginger. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen because it's time that we are going to meet our surprise, we actually have multiple primates that we're meeting today because we're going to meet primate Emily and our orangutan. So Emily, I'm going to swing it over to you. 
All right, well, hello, everyone. Um, so I am actually the primate with the longest childhood. Human beings, humans are the ones that have the longest childhood, but I wanna show you our lovely orange apes here at the St. Louis Zoo. Uh, they have been quite busy here, sort of swinging around everywhere, and they're a little hard to pin down right now, but I'm gonna to try to show you. Um, Ginger is currently climbing the rock, sort of like what I would believe Spider-Man would do. So I'll see if we can go over and see her. But we have four orangutans here. They are Sumatran orangutans. Orangutans only live on the islands of Sumatra and Borneo down in Southeast Asia. Uh, they are super intelligent, so it's really fun to get to create enrichment for these guys, which is things that we give our animals every day to keep their brains and bodies busy. And, oh goodness, Ginger's all the way at the top. So these guys are the most arboreal ape. And you'll be able to tell because, of course, she's all the way in the back. We cannot see her very well. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour and see if we can go find Miss Mira. Uh, our orangutans do have their spots that they like to hang out. Mira really likes to hang out all the way on the other side of the habitat. Ginger's usually up at the top. Her older sister, Ruby, is usually at the top of the waterfall taking a nap. You can all see, um, if you haven't been able to make it to the zoo in a while, you can see that it looks just like it always had. It's lovely. I'm gonna come around here to the corner. So orangutans are one of my favorite animals on earth. They are super amazing. And it does look like Miss Mira might be underneath <laughs> her uh, sheet here. So I'm gonna come around. So you can see that she is taking a nap under a sheet. In the wild, they would use large leaves to do this. Here at the zoo, we give them different types of sheets and blankets because it does the same thing as the leaves would do, and it's a lot easier to find sheets and blankets. They're reusable. They're recycled from people who can't use their sheets anymore. And we don't have to grow big, giant leaves. So if we kind of look up there, sometimes you can see Ruby up on the waterfall, but she's not visible currently. But you'll notice in this habitat, it kind of goes uphill. It goes up into uh, the sky a lot more than say our chimpanzees over here, which is a little bit more flat because they spend a little bit more time on the ground. So one of the things that's really important to know about orangutans is they are one of the most endangered primates on earth. That's actually because um, people are putting in an agricultural crop called palm oil. It's in half of everything that we consume every day. It's in milk. It's a nice vitamin A substitute. But unfortunately, sometimes farmers will put in um, the palm oil by taking out the rainforest. And these guys, you can see, they need nice, healthy, big trees to survive. And so one of the things that you can do to help is make sure that you uh, use sustainable palm oil and let companies know that you want sustainable palm oil. So let me see here. Oh, Ginger's a little bit closer. Is that Ruby? Oh, it's Ruby. All right, friends. Do you guys have any questions for me about our orangutans? Emily, we do have a really good question. Excellent. Actually, we have, a, we have a few, and I, I think that you could do a really good job answering these. So I'll just do them slowly, uh, okay. one at a time. So how old is Ginger now? Ginger is five and a half. So she will turn six in December. And are Ginger and Ruby about the same size now? Uh, Ruby is about the size of her mom, actually. Ruby is 16 years old now, so she is uh, considered an adult. Whereas Ginger is a probably, I would say about half her size, really. So Ginger has some growing to do. Um, do any of the orangutans have a favorite food? Oh, yeah. So um, <laughs> one of Ginger's favorites is avocado. Uh, Mira actually really likes beans. It was one of her favorites. That does sound pretty tasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and then a really good one, should we not use any palm oil? Oh, that's a great question. So boycotting anything doesn't really work very well. 
And at this point, it's impossible to boycott palm oil. The other really important reason is that um, people who produce products that are consumable need some kind of oil. And palm oil is actually 10 times more productive. So that means it takes up way less space than other oils that are grown like canola oil or soybean oil. So if we were to stop using palm oil, we would just be having them grow oil somewhere else and take up way more space. So palm oil when farmed correctly is actually a good product to have, which is why we don't want to boycott it. That makes sense to me. Thank you for explaining that. <laughs> um, we are getting pretty close to the time when my manager's like, get off the webinar. Just kidding. <laughs> We're getting close to the end of time. So Ms. Emily, thank you so much for joining us and sharing the orangutans. I'm going to go ahead and finish up over here. All right. Thanks, friends. Have a great orangutan day. Have fun at the zoo, Emily. Bye. Um, that was so great to see the orangutans. Um, I know, I think one question was, are the monkeys in apes in the same area? They're actually in separate areas. So we have the primate house located in the historic hill um, in the green section on the zoo map. And that's where our lemurs and monkeys are. And then our apes are actually located in jungle of the apes and fragile forest, depending on the season when you visit. So they're in a separate section of the zoo. All right, now, how we can help. Many of you have asked that question. Um, so there are some things that we can do. So when we, like, when we think about primates and their habitats in the wild, we probably think about trees because a lot of them need um, trees to survive and fruits and those things like that. Um, healthy forests are so important and not just for primates, but for many, many animals, healthy habitats. So when we purchase products such as paper or anything created from wood, looking for the FSC logo means that it's done in a sustainable way that is um, taking into account that animals need the healthy forest too. So it does leave habitat for animals as well. There is the palm oil shopping guide. Emily mentioned about palm oil and somebody asked a question, should we not use it? Palm oil is in a lot of products and sometimes it's hard to know if palm oil is in a product or not. It can be named a few different words or a few different names. Um, so looking at this palm oil shopping guide can be very helpful. I think Connor might be able to put a link in, if not at the St. Louis Zoo's website at stlzoo.org in conservation tab on do-it-yourself conservation, or if you look up orangutans, there's more information located there if you're curious to learn more. Lastly, what we can do to help is to share what we learn. Everything that we talked about today, feel free to share with your friends and family. The more that we share our knowledge, the better because knowledge is power and it's always fun to learn. Now let's see, I think we might have, I'm gonna double check the, the q and A. I I think we might have another question that maybe I missed. All right, nope, I think we're good, excellent. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you want to visit the zoo, we've missed you guys, we welcome you back. Just make sure to visit our website to sign up for a free timed reservation and make sure to bring your mask. Now it's really cool if you're like, well, I don't really have a mask that I like, or maybe you don't have one that's like super comfortable. The zoo is selling masks and like some of them have really cute animals. This is one that I purchased recently and it has a red panda on it. So just know that they do have some masks available for purchase up in, um, up in our gift shops. Thank you guys again. Have a wonderful day. Um, and hopefully we'll see you soon, either in the Zoom or at the Zoo. Bye, everyone.